Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Davenport University Football Signing Day Special. We are coming to you from the Davenport University Student Center. I'm Rick Berkey, along with the head football coach, Sparky McEwen, to talk about this exciting day. A lot of new players coming to wear the red and black, and uh, we'll get a chance over the next uh, half hour or so to let you not only see who's coming, also we'll give you some video highlights and tell you more details about the players that are committed to play for Coach McEwen's program, and uh, it's an exciting time, Sparky. Uh, one of the highlights uh, of the year for, for you and your staff who have been so busy since the last off, uh, game com was completed. You know, right after that last game, our, our staff know, uh, just, you know, based on scheduling, you know, we get on the road the very next day, and we have not, um, you know, had a day off in regards to that because recruiting and the way that it falls with the NCAA, you only have so much time, you know, to really get out in homes and, you know, see these kids on their campuses and things like that. So, uh, and, and we have a, a special situation with us where, you know, we recruit, uh, there's a certain style, you know, uh, it's just like setting up a game plan for a game. We have a certain style that we have for recruiting. You know, we get on the road early and we go and hit some of the, um, you know, the places that we look to find kids that are in the transfer portal or, you know, junior college transfers or four-year transfers. So, it's been tough, you know, uh, but we're very excited about the class that we put together. When you uh, you mentioned the, the game plan for the whole recruiting strategy, Sparky, um, how many players have you been in dealing with for, for more than one year? Or is it pretty much year to year? Or are there some players you've been uh, talking with, at least communicating with, uh, for more than a year? You know, it depends. You know, and I'll start with transfers. You know, transfers are, you know, student athletes that either – you know, they've been out of, you know, school for a year or so. Maybe it's been a Division One kid that, you know, has gone into the transfer portal and he hasn't made up his mind. So that could go on for months. You know, if it's high school kids, it could be a couple years. Kids that we've, you know, we've seen as juniors or maybe even sophomores just to say hello and just to, uh, you know, let them know that, you know, we see them, they're on our radar. So there's a number of things that go, you know, that go into this thing of recruiting. And, um, you know, for us at the Division Two level, a lot of the kids that we go after here in the GLEAC, you know, these are, you know, these are young people that can play at the highest level, or obviously they can play at our level. So there's a lot of evaluations that goes into this thing, and then there's a science that we have here. You know, uh, you'll have your board, you'll have your top tens, and then you'll have another list of guys as well. So, and we do this for four-year guys, JUCO guys, and uh, obviously the high school kids. And one of the challenges, of course, for you and your staff is to look at someone and uh, evaluate not only where are they now, but where are they going to be in two and three years from now? That's a huge part of it. You know, uh, we're in a situation here with just such a young program that there's kids that we'll take right now that will project, you know, these are student athletes that can help us in two years, maybe even three years. Uh, then you add onto that a, a red shirt. So uh, there's guys that we'll take, we'll body type these guys. We want to see if this kid's going to be able to grow a little more over the next few years and uh, develop. You know, uh, player development in our program is big. Uh, you know, we're at the level right now that we're going to have to take a guy, you know, that we feel that's going to come into our program and we can develop over a period of time. We're going to have this uh, in two different segments for you. Uh, the first segment will the mid be the mid-year enrollees, most of them with collegiate experience, but a couple players mid-year enrollees coming straight from high school. We'll highlight those as well. And uh, then in the second segment, we'll get to the, the, uh, the high schoolers uh, who have uh, committed and signed to join Sparky McEwen's program for the Panthers uh, this coming 2022 season. So let's get right at it, uh, the mid-year enrollees. And we're going to start with one of those high school players, uh, Trent Allen. Uh, is an early enrollee from Orlando, Florida, Bishop Moore High School. Tell us about Trent. Well, the first thing is a 4.0 student. You know, we were after Trent um, back when he was in high school, and, man, it was a fierce battle for him. And, actually, he was a young man that um, committed to Rhode Island. You know, so these are the type of student athletes that we go after, these guys that can play at the highest level. And it was one of those deals where he really couldn't make his mind up. But because we stayed at it in the recruiting process, things didn't work out for him there. All of a sudden now you get a kid with tremendous grades this way. He's a good athlete, um, a young man that we feel can come into an offensive line situation where uh, we need players to play for us now. And Trent, uh, we're excited to have him. Uh, he's a great per person, great character, and we're excited about the future here with him. Yeah, he bench presses 415 pounds, so uh, certainly has the strength necessary to step right in and uh, contribute to your offensive line. Staying on the offensive line, another mid-year enrollee, a JUCO transfer from Independence Community College, Oscar Figueroa. Yeah, Oscar, we're high on once again. This is a young man that, uh, you know, once again, the process, like you stated earlier, how soon do you get on these guys? 
you know, he was a young man that was obviously at the uh, the, the uh, junior college level, you know, that we projected out and were hopes, you know, that, um, you know, he liked us enough to the point where we get him on the visit, let him check things out. And he came here. He loved Grand Rapids. But here's a young man, once again, that we're expecting to come in and, you know, uh, make an impact on our offensive line right away because we had so many issues there last year. And I'm, I, I really feel comfortable saying that we have fixed, you know, those issues and those holes that we have on that line. And he's one of the guys that we're expecting big things out of. And one of the things that sold you on him is his versatility. He played all five offensive line positions for independent CC. Well, you know, at this level, when it comes to travel rosters, he's a guy now that you have that has value. You know, he's a guy now, w for instance, that he snapped the football. You know, knowing that your number, your number three snapper could be your starting, um, you know, guard. You know, so uh, getting individuals at this point is uh, one of those things that, uh, when you have a guy with value, that's exciting to us. Staying on the offensive line, a JUCO transfer from uh, originally Reno, Nevada, Butte College. Uh, he came from Xavier Jones. Xavier Jones is a fun one because you know, in size, he's not the biggest offensive lineman we have. But he is so aggressive. You know, he has tremendous speed. And some things we're going to do differently on offense this year. You need guys, you know, that can get to that next level or pull. Um, I'm excited about his future here with us. Well, you teased us a little bit about you can do some things differently, Sparky. Can, can you give us a little bit more on that or is that uh, behind closed door stuff? Yeah, be better on offense than we were last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope so. All right, staying on the offensive line, Jeremiah Apollo, a D2 transfer from Kennesaw State, a California native, 6'1", and he's got good size at 290. You know, he's another young man that's aggressive, uh, very, very tenacious. You know, he's one that uh, came on his visits. He's going to be a locker room favorite around here. Uh, great personality. He's a guy that already has his uh, degree. Excited, excited about him. And, you know, when you watch his clips, man, he is a tough, nasty lineman. And we need some more of those type of guys here. He graduate transfer with two years left. Uh, Julio Romo, also on the offensive line, another JUCO transfer from San Bernardino Community College and a Fontana, California native. You know, Julio's one of those young guys that, you know, his coach was extremely excited for him to come in here and help us powerful already in the weight room he's putting up big numbers for us and our strength conditioning coach uh brought he i mean he just goes on and on and on about this guy that we can't wait to put him in a helmet and see what he does you know in our uh, spring practices now another uh, i believe high school transfer correct me if i'm wrong tommy russo out of caledonia high school right down the road right down the road this is a young man that fell under the radar okay coming out of high school there are a number of schools in the gliac that was uh you know actually looking at him and he decided not to play uh, football that first year. So once again, here we go. We stayed on this young man, and we followed out his career path. And, you know, we had him there in the office, and he's made a decision that he's going to play. And as you see, he's got great size. You know, he's got four years left, a little more mature now. And um, we, we get to keep him at home. Back to your connection from the community colleges in the great state of California, Jesus Santisteban. Santisteban uh, he a uh, JUCO transfer from College of the Canyons, a great uh, CC football program. Well, you just did a great job with uh, pronouncing his name. Man, <laughs> that was really good. Jesus, man. yeah, I got it. Oh, yeah, that last name. Boy, I butchered it all, all the time. So amazing talent right here. Here's a young man that, um, you know, come from a great program, College of the Canyons. We've had some great connections with them out there, and we've, we've had a lot of success with our two-year uh, degree transfer, you know, young people. And he's uh, another guy that we're looking to come in and compete for a job right away. Uh, he understands the significant significance of coming in here and making his presence felt right away. Let's go back to that, Sparky, a little bit. Uh, we mentioned your connections with the community colleges in California, in the in the Golden State, uh, San Bernardino, College of the Canyons, and so on, and Fullerton. Uh, you must have built up a pretty good rapport with those coaches and those programs. We have, we have, and it, you know, it actually dates back to you know my time spending, um, you know, as a head coach professionally you know, coaching football, that, you know, back then. I built up a lot of connections out there on the West Coast. And I have some coaches, you know, as well, that's put built up some uh, connections there and that's coached out there. So we're able to go out there in order to compete in a, uh, the GLIAC. You're going to have to get some football players that are competitive, that are tough, and that's been coached well. We, we tend to see that the kids out in California at the junior college level, they've been coached extremely well. And our final mid-year enrollee on the offensive line is a Division One transfer from Indiana State, Kevion Walston. Another uh, young, talented guy, you know, that uh, actually he can go either side of the ball, okay? We've signed him as an offensive lineman. We think that he's a young man that can play the tackle position and play it at a high level. 
uh, we're excited about him. We've been after him, going back to what you stated earlier in the show. Uh, this is a young man that we've had to continue to, to recruit. Um, Tierra Turner's on our roster. He's a friend of him, so we've used Tierra, you know, to that extent where we uh, stayed in contact with him, but now he's a Panther. Well, Kavion shows his athleticism. Uh, he was a three-sport athlete in high school. Get this, football, basketball, and volleyball. That's uh, unusual. Yeah, you know, and it, one of the things that we look for here at this level is that we look for kids that play three sports. I'm ex so excited about him. Actually, we have a basketball league that we're in right now, and he's one of my best uh, basketball players. I drafted him high in our uh, coaches draft, and I'm so excited that uh, he's here as a uh, football player. Sparky, you mentioned the three-sport athlete and, and how that appeals to you, and, and I, I talk to so many uh, college coaches that favor that and, and really cringe when they see parents of kids directing their kids to one sport all year round uh, and, and that you're, you're not in that camp. No, 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 no. We want to see kids compete. Okay, that's one thing that you can't coach. You can't coach the clock and the whistle. We want to see guys go out there and compete um, you know, in, in a, whether it's wrestling, whether it's track, uh, you know, whether it's, it doesn't matter to us. We love our three sport athletes and, you know, it keeps those guys disciplined once they get to this level. Let's slip over to the tight end side. We've got three mid-year enrollees from the tight end side. We start with another D1 transfer, this time from Mount Pleasant, Central Michigan University, Bridgman, Michigan native, Hunter Adams. You know, Hunter, Hunter was a pleasant surprise for us. He's a young man that uh, coming out of high school, he had a number of teams interested in him, and uh, he decided that he was going to go to Central Michigan. Uh, he's going to have an opportunity to come here and play. He's got four years of eligibility remaining, and this offseason is extremely, extremely important to him. He's healthy at this point in time, and that's a room, you know, that we're looking to. Obviously, we had Miles, you know, Goldburn here, and we're looking to fill his shoes, uh, and we're looking to do something different on offense with tight ends as well. So having Hunter he here is exciting for us. Another tight end, uh, Juco transfer from Independent CC, 6'6 six, six and 250, tight end Max Martini. You know, Max brings a little something different to the table, okay? He's a guy that's a little longer, a little linear, and uh, has good speed. But, you know, sometimes when those guys get that tall, it's a little tough on them blocking. But actually, that's his greatest attribute, is his ability to come off the football and get after people. Speaking of 6'6", six, six, another 6'6", six, six tight end coming in. He's also 250, one of those San Bernardino Community College transfers from California, Eric Wells. You know, Eric's a young man that we've uh, watched and we've gotten a lot of great feedback on, and already he's made his presence felt here on campus. He's done some tremendous things for us here. Uh, he's putting up great numbers in the weight room. And, you know, Brock, it's fun sitting down talking with Brock. There's certain guys that you stick out, and this is a young man that we feel ha has a tremendous, tremendous upside. Uh, he's a raw talent, but at the same time, you know, anytime you have size and speed, okay, you have a shot. So um, I'm excited about the new coach coming in that's going to be able to coach him because he's got a couple years here, and um, he's going to be an impact player in his layout. Coach, uh, we're, we're not even halfway through the list of the mid-year enrollees, and, and that is a special thing. You've never had this many mid-year enrollees. Tell us about the advantages that players have and the coaches have having kids in there at the mid-year point. Well, for us, we have to compete at a high level. You know, we're still a young program. You know, you just, you, you, you know, you've got the likes of, you know, the Fair States and the Grand Valley that's competing at a high level. And, you know, Fair State just won a national championship, and Grand Valley is known as a powerhouse in D2. Saginaw Valley had a, a, a huge win against uh, a team that's going Division One, and Michigan Tech finished third in our league. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So you've got to have the ability to really compete and recruit top quality kids. So going out for us, getting transfers in here is a way to bridge the gap in the uh, talent area in which you need in order to compete in this league. Well, speaking of competing, we're going to start on the defensive line with the mid-year uh, enrollees right now, and we're going to start with, with a big one, and I mean in more than ways than one, a D1 transfer from Ohio State University, I should say the Ohio State University, Malik Barrow, 6'3", 265. You know, wow, we've, um, you know, had a very intense recruiting battle uh, with a couple of universities out there, and uh, you know, winning in the recruiting battle against some of these top D2 teams and even some D1 teams because here's a graduate transfer. Here's a young man that we really feel that can come in here and compete in our conference and, you know, compete at a high level. He's already had the top, you know, coaching in the country. He's coming from an outstanding program, obviously. And, and this is a young man that actually 
um, we feel like can come in here and do some big things in our conference because, you know, we were missing some things on the defense side of the ball, and we really felt like, you know, through recruiting and recruiting at Power 5 schools, we're going to be able to get a couple of those individuals to help us compete at the level that we want to. As a grad transfer, uh, again, you, uh, coming in in his first year in the program, but you would expect, I would think, leadership from Malik and players and like that. You do. You do. When these guys come in here and they have degrees and – these guys have had the discipline to be in programs for three and four years, and they're a little more mature. You know, during the recruiting process, the vetting process, we talk to those guys about leadership. We talk to those guys about playing for the we. You know, uh, it's a team effort here, and, you know, there are certain catchphrases and words that we look for in the recruiting period. And, man, he won. He won with us in a lot of ways and uh, to the point where it was fierce in, in, in trying to get his services. But he's here. He's, do, he's putting up big numbers in the weight room already, and um, in a couple of weeks he'll be putting the pad down. All right, let's uh, now talk a little bit about a young man from the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, but he went out to play community college in Kansas, had a terrific CC career, uh, Juco transfer Darius Lynham. We've been, we've been watching him since high school, okay, and he was a young man that had to go to Juco route, which is at some time is great for these young people. They need that extra year or two years. Uh, whether it be academics, whether it be mature, maturity, whether it be just for them wanting to play at the highest level possible. So here's a young man that Coach Mello was extremely high on. He's known him for some time. And all of a sudden, you know, through good coaching and these guys, you know, doing their job as coaches, he's tracking them this entire way. We really feel like we got a young man that's going to be able to come in here and, um, you know, you know, get right in the system. Came from Oak Park High School, which has been pretty good to your program in other ways. Yeah, yeah. All those kids over there are well coached. Coach does a, a, a tremendous job and good friend. And, um, you know, he's, he's putting kids out all over the country. A Virginia native uh, who went the JUCO route uh, to Iowa Western Community College, another defensive lineman, Trayvon Pearson. Can't tell you how excited I am about this young man. This young man uh, flew under the radar. Uh, we got him by way of a transfer, and he was one of those guys due to COVID and some of the things that were going on. He's going to be another guy that's going to be able to step in right away, high football IQ, tremendous motor, uh, extremely physical. So, um, once again, you know, we have already have the defensive line here that's been pretty solid, but now when you start bringing in some of these guys, you build your depth and a lot of these guys go compete you know, that's going to give you a great competitive advantage when you're going into the fall. And one more defensive lineman to mention, and again, another D1 transfer. This one from Arkansas State University, Jamonte Peck, 6'5 and 330. You know, um, Lucas Mello has done a tremendous job in recruiting. He's a recruiting coordinator, and I've seen him go after guys. He's a bulldog on the trail, and I can tell you this here. This is one that he did not want to give away, and we were able to – uh, get this young man, obviously the head coach there was Butch Jones. He was a teammate of mine at, um, at Ferris State, and he's now the head coach at Arkansas State. And so, um, you know, through Lucas Mello pursuing these guys out there on the recruiting trail, man, it was a big win for us knowing that we were able to get this guy. He's going to help bolster some things for us in the middle, and um, he's a guy that's an impact player as well. We're uh, still in the mid-year enrollee uh, category. We still have the high school assignees uh, coming up a little bit later on, but now we're going to switch over to the defensive backfield. We'll start with a D3 transfer from Olivet, uh, Isaac Pride. You know, once again, the transfer portal. Here we go. Here's the transfer portal. Here's a young man that's gone down and he played at Olivet, which is an outstanding program, and they're putting out some really good athletes. We knew about this young man coming out of high school, okay, and he was on our board, but at the same time, you know, we had some other guys that were a little higher on the board, but now all of a sudden he goes off to a Division three school and he's playing for championships. He's being developed by good coaching, and, you know, for whatever reason, he decided he wanted to try and play at a higher level. You know, playing in the Gleix is not easy, okay, by no means. And um, we brought him in. We took a good look at him, and obviously our DBs here were almost known, you know, known as a uh, DBU. You know, we've got NFL prospects in our secondary, and um, they're, they're well coached. And he's this player, this particular player is long, athletic, and we think he fits our scheme well. We mentioned offensive lineman Kavion Watson coming on, uh, Walston rather, coming on from uh, Indiana State. Well, another D1 transfer from Indiana State, C.J. Rutherford joins your defensive backfield. Boom. I, that's all I have to say. Boom. We hit, we hit the jackpot with this one. This one here in uh, a secondary that finished number one in the league in pass defense, um, we just got better. We just got better in our secondary. This is a young man 
football IQ is off the chart. Um, man, he's been raised the right way. You want to talk about a well-respected man, um, great integrity, character guy, a leader in our room, uh, will not stop wanting to learn. We love this about him. Intense guy, has great hips. He can run uh, explosive through, you know, contact. So uh, we had a big win, you know, on this one here. C.J. Rutherford, a Chicago native, not only outstanding in football in high school, but also ran track in the Windy City. Uh, we're going to switch over now to mid-year transfers in uh, the wide receiver category. And we start with another D1 transfer. Duquesne University brings Isaiah Adams here to Caledonia and the Panther program. You know, we truly felt like we needed to upgrade in that area. Uh, we've lost a couple really good receivers. Uh, one was an NFL prospect and he's made a decision that he's going to continue to pr uh, pursue those dreams. And so, um, you know, Coach Taylor and myself sat down, and we felt like we needed to get deeper in that position area. And this young man here is one that's going to be a tremendous help to us. Uh, he comes from, once again, out there in California where, you know, it's easy to go out there and find, you know, skilled guys out there that can run. And he's one that I think that's going to push the guys in that, uh, that receiver room. And we're seeing some of his versatility. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's quite a kick returner. He was so far, so I think you're looking for that for him as well. Absolutely. All right, uh, staying in the wide receiver category, another D1 transfer. This one from Eastern Illinois, Michigan City, Indiana native, Demetrius Garrett. You know, I was familiar with him from some time ago. And, you know, obviously, here we go with the transfer portal, okay? Once again, Coach Taylor sat down, and, and we really felt like, you know, after you lose the likes of, you know, Journey Sloan, um, you know, these are the type of individuals that are tough to replace. So, obviously, when you're going to replace those type of individuals, you want to go out and get some guys that have that same type of tool set, uh, but that could come in and impact your team right away. Here's a young man that's already gotten, um, you know, playing time at the Division One level, and he comes here. He still has three years left of eligibility, and, um, man, it just made our receiver room that much deeper. Another wide receiver, a JUCO transfer from College of the Canyons uh, in California, Former Hawaii commit uh, is now going to be playing for the Panthers, Alonzel Henderson. You know, um, Nate, all I can tell you about is Nate Coot. You know, when you think about, about Coot, it makes us all smile as Panthers. We have finally found a guy in that same type of mode of uh, explosive, you know, great feet. Tough. Uh, yeah. Tough, great speed. Uh, and once again, when you're talking about one of these, you know, kids that, um, that played his high school ball in California, you know, you, you think about speed. And he has every bit of that, has a dynamic personality, great football IQ, and just loves Grand Rapids. So uh, recruiting him, we had some fierce battles there. And uh, we're just happy to have him here in West Michigan. And another wide receiver in the mid-year enrollee category, another from the MIAA. This one from Adrian College, Sterling Heights native Preston Smith. Presence, uh, presence, uh, pleasant surprise. You know, I've seen him when he was coming out of high school, and, man, he's grown. He's gotten much bigger, and he is going to be an impact player for us, you know. Great size on the perimeter. You need to have guys that, number one, is going to go out there and block, okay. I thought last year that we, we were not that good on the perimeter as blockers, and uh, Coach Taylor and myself, we talked about this, and we said we want to improve in that area. Uh, We've got to get stronger. Okay, we've got to get a little tougher on that, uh, on that side of the ball out there. And uh, this young man right here, only not is he a good blocker, but he plays well downfield. He has great ball skills, you know, so I think that he's going to be an impact player here as well. One of the areas you've told me that uh, we look for an improved uh, product this year on, on your uh, field is in the running back category as a squad. Miles Anderson, a JUCO transfer, Pasadena Community College, and a California native, native as well. Here's a young man that we got late in the process, and you want to talk about a tenacious blocker. Wow. We went out, we talked to his coaches, we watched his video, and this guy right here, he puts himself in a great position here with us when it comes to value, okay? He will pass block, okay? That was an area that we felt like we needed to improve on. But on top of that, he's a pretty good ball carrier as well. Uh, outstanding student, uh, does a great job, and I think it, with an already talented running back room, he just adds to it. Another D1 transfer coming in in the running back category from Akron University, Jamison Jodway. Okay, this is a young man that uh, played at Akron, and, you know, when you talk to other coaches, they felt like this is a young man that could be an impact player in the GLAAC. He's a young man that's already shown up here, and he's, I mean, he goes into that weight room and he attacks the weight room, okay? 
Uh, Brock has spoken very highly of this young man, but not only is he a pretty good running back, but, you know, we have the opportunity to line him up in the slot. Okay, when you have a kid like this, extremely strong, explosive, and quick, um, that's, that spells a guy that can catch bubbles, get the ball in space, and make things happen. Farmington, Michigan native is Jamison. Uh, excelled in three sports in high school, football, wrestling, and track. And another running back, this one a Juco transfer from the College of DuPage, a Saginaw native, Chase Mendoza. Once again, just through uh, the connections here in the state of Michigan, we were very aware you know, of who he was coming out, okay? And here's another young man that's a lot like uh, Jodway where he's going to be a value guy. He's going to be a guy that you could play in the slot, uh, obviously in the backfield, and do some things of getting on the ball in space. So extremely excited for the running back room. We just got deeper. Uh, it's going to be very competitive here uh, in our winter season before we even get to spring. We're staying in the mid-year enrollee category. Now we're going to get to the quarterbacks. So and we're going to start with our first one, a high school early enrollee who you're really excited about, Vinny Booth out of Harper Woods, Michigan. You know, Vinny, uh, he, he's coming from a program where, um, you know, Coach Oden is, is well-respected at the game as a coach. And, and Vinny, um, just so you know, he's, like you said, he's a mid-year early enrollee from high school. He's a high school student athlete. It tells you a lot about – you know how serious he is in the uh, classroom. He's just as serious on the football field, okay? We know that he's a guy that's going to come in here. He's going to pick up on our system fast. I've already learned from Benny that he's a heck of a basketball player here. He's playing basketball on one of our teams that we have here in the winter. And uh, But great leader. Great leader. He's always, already working hard to get himself on the field. So we're excited about the future here with Benny. Another quarterback coming in, a D2 grand, uh, grad transfer from Concordia St. Paul, Johnny Saavedra. Um, you know, when you think of Hayden, Hayden Majeski, mm -hmm. this is where I put this young man in that mode. That's high and, praise, yeah. You know, extremely high praise, and I'm extremely excited for Johnny. He's here already. Great leader, man, just a you know, great kid. Um, he works with his teammates. I mean, this guy, he's, he puts in the time. He puts in the time, so – coming in and compete at that level where we need him to compete so he can have a shot at being a guy here uh, playing quarterback. Johnny Saavedra, a Tarzana, California native. And our final quarterback, we mentioned someone that uh, had a chance to meet uh, uh, last week uh, that you're really excited about, another D1 transfer coming in at Signal Caller from UConn and Orlando, Florida native Marvin Washington. You know, Marvin, um, wow, since his arrival on campus, um, man, I can't tell you how pleased we are with him. And, you know, in the process, he had a number of teams that, um, you know, that were after him. You know, as you watch some of the clips on him, this is a guy that's played football at the Power 5 level. And when you have this type of talent, um, man, just watching the ball come off his hands, uh, extremely powerful hand arm, uh, quick release, he's accurate, uh, and he has the ability as an athlete to make you miss and take it the distance. So I'm extremely excited about him. You know, he gets to go into that quarterback room where we're going to have some great battles. You know, we're going to have some great battles. And these guys know uh, we were not happy with the way we finished last year, and it's going to be a very competitive room. And uh, we got guys that's here that's got a multiple years remaining. So I'm excited about our quarterback room. It's the deepest it's ever been. And, you know, it probably is the smartest it's ever been as well. So extremely, extremely excited about this group. And you learned last year uh, the hard way that the depth of that quarterback room can't be too much because you were so snake bitten with injuries in that area last year. I, I've never had anything like that happen to me. You know, we went through seven quarterbacks, and uh, some of the injuries were freak injuries. But at the same time, uh, I've never seen anything like that. But our guys have got to be prepared to play. And now we have a, a, a wealth of talent at that position, and there's going to be some opportunities to make some things happen in the GLIAC. Let's head over to the linebacker position uh, coming in to play. Where are the red and black for Coach McEwen's uh, Panthers? We're going to start with a D2 transfer from Wayne State University, uh, Warren, Michigan native, Onika Ojanaka. I think wow. I got that. Yeah, that, once again, you did a great job. <laughs> Good job there. Uh, pleasant surprise. A young man that, um, you know, Coach Brock, once again, and we, we have our meetings in regards to our strength and conditioning. And, you know, you want to talk about another young man that's coming in, moving some weight. And, uh, man, he's, he's, he's a hardworking young man, and um, he's great in the classroom. So we're excited about, um, you know, O's career here. All right. Uh, you also brought in uh, a uh, – oh, where do we leave off? With, with Ojanaka, right? Okay, good. Another linebacker. He's a JUCO transfer from Pasadena Community College, an L.A. native, Lucio 
Rodriguez. Man, you're really good. <laughs> you know, when you when you think about linebacker, you got to start thinking about quarterback of your defense. Okay, this guy has an extremely high IQ. He's a young man that, um, man, he's he's going to be able to build that depth in that room that we need because we, if you recall, our two starting linebackers played one or two games together last year. So we were so snake bitten by injuries, man, and it's something that, um, you know, I've seen happen before, but not to this degree, you know. So we just built that depth up because we felt like when the two guys that went down that are our starters and they're both returning, we struggled. We struggle. We struggle immensely now, but we feel like we've brought some people in here that's going to be able to come in and build our depth and uh, compete. Last year's team, uh, your kicker and punter, were one of the strengths of your team, but uh, you uh, have uh, strengthened it even more by bringing in a D2 transfer from Saginaw Valley, Samuel Zuba. Yeah, excited about that one, just to have the ability to um, you know compete in this uh, this conference and take the pressures of winning in this conference. And we've got kids, like you just said, that was one of the strengths that we had. You know, here our punter was second team all conference. He returns with two years remaining. Uh, our kicker did a very solid job. But, you know, at the same time, we always want our guys competing, you know, at a high level. And you brought in, uh, I don't know if you've had a mid-year transfer before, as a long snapper before. Joe Seidel is a JUCO transfer from Independence CC, a Chicago native, and, and you've got him in. You know, we've been successful, you know, at the long snapping position, and, you know, it's underrated. You know, we, um, you know, if we see that a team is struggling with snaps, you know, we actually have schemes designed to go and get one. You know, here's a young man that we're very confident about that, you know, he can get it off in the timely fashion that we look for. And uh, not only that, he's able to cover. You know, if you have a guy that can snap and cover, now you can do some different things in the, uh, the, the, the kicking game that can obviously flip the field for you. Well, we're going to take a short break. We're going to come back and talk about uh, the high school uh, signees that are uh, d making their commitment to today to play for the Red and Black and Coach McEwen. So stay with us. The Davenport University Football Signing Day special continues here on the Davenport Athletics Network. And we continue with the Davenport University football program signing day special here. We've uh, gone through the mid-year enrollees and uh, uh, they included mostly uh, with, with collegiate experience, but also a few uh, that have uh, coming right out of high school. Now we're going to talk to the uh, commitments right now that have signed to start uh, in the fall. And uh, Lucas Mello is the uh, recruiting coordinator and also the running backs coach uh, for your Davenport University football program. He, know, he uh, joins us right now and Lucas uh, coaches... Uh, uh, shared his praise for you for the hard work you've done on that. G just give us a little bit of a view of, of what you have been through since the last game of the season because uh, that's when it really started for you, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, as a staff, we, we took off Sunday right after we played Grand Valley on Saturday. We were, we were on the road. The whole staff, um, for the most part, were really all over the country. Um, going out, trying to find guys that, that, we've, made, that we've identified throughout the year. Um, whether it was in camps, um, you know, which was a little different than last year where during COVID we weren't able to go see guys. 
Um, we were able to see a lot of these guys throughout, uh, whether it was game day visits, going to watch them play, camps, and then um, after the season ended, we went out there and got to kind of start the recruiting process. Lucas, with with the huddle tapes that are out there in Access, you get a, so a chance to see so many players on tape. Then you go out and meet them in person. Tell us, what are you looking for? You've already seen the tape. You, you, you've seen the skill level. What is it you're looking for when you sit down face-to-face -face with somebody? Well, with Huddle, a lot of times, you know, you get to see the, the highlight tapes, right? You, don't, you only get to see the best uh, clips when you go out there and watch them play in a game, whether it's the playoff game. You get to see how competitive they are, how they are with their teammates. Um, you get to see how they interact with, uh, with you as a person when you meet them at the schools. Um, and then you just get to ask – you know, questions when when you're at the school to go see these guys, meet their parents, and and it's not only us trying to recruit them; it's it's essentially them trying to recruit us as well. And I also think again, this is the part that is probably one of the toughest things for all football, uh, all college coaches, is that when you talk to their high school coach, don't they almost all of them just praise the the guys as much as they can, you know, because they want to see them succeed and go on and have opportunities? How do you measure what the coaches tell you? I guess what I'm asking, you know, with the reality. Yeah, that I mean that that goes back to just building relationship with these coaches, right? Because obviously, yeah, you're gonna run into some coaches that are just uh, salesmen and they're trying to get their guys out, and and I, you know it's fine, I'm good with it. Um, you know, uh, being a former high school coach, I, I get it. But uh, you know, as you build relationship with coaches and you, you can, you know who you can trust, and and you you got to do your due diligence yourself and just kind of, you know, do your background and find out, um, you know. All right, let's get uh, to uh, some of the players that uh, have signed uh, today uh, on official signing day. Uh, we're gonna, we've got a bunch of offensive linemen. Let's start with Mason Roach out of Penfield High School in Battle Creek. Yeah, Mason Roach is a guy that, uh, you know, along with a majority of these guys, if not all of them, we got to see in person, uh, you know, run around. Saw Mason at multiple camps throughout, throughout the camp circuit. Um, you know, he came to the DU camp and big, strong kid, wrestler, um, good academics, really good gift for us. Uh, from uh, Detroit King High School in the Motor City, six foot, three hundred eighteen pound Terrell Hollingsworth. Yep, uh, Terrell is, is a load now. Okay, Terrell is another kid we saw in camp. Was extremely impressive. I thought he was the best offensive lineman at that camp. Could play O line or D line. Um, he's gonna. He's a guy we're bringing in as a center. Uh, we're, we're bringing in multiple guys who can snap. Uh, he won a state championship this year, all city, all state. Really, really good gift for us. Terrell, a guy, uh, again, comes in at over three hundred pounds. How do you determine what his right weight will be collegiately and what you're shooting for him to be at? Well, you know, Coach Spark had, had mentioned earlier about uh, our strength coach, Coach Brock. He's, he's amazing. He's a leader what he does. He's a guy who's going to work um, with all these guys in regards to their weight, um, you know, weight that they're going to be functional and, and successful at. So that's kind of his forte there. Another offensive lineman coming right here from the Grand Rapids area, another 300-plus pounder, Amon Parks. Yeah, Mon's a great kid. Excited to have him. Uh, he was one of the first offensive line commits um, earlier on in this process. You know, obviously right down the road. Uh, really excited to keep him around here. His family, get, his family, his coaches, his friends, obviously get to come in every Saturday and come see him compete for us. Down in Florida, Melbourne High School, a uh, terrific uh, football program down there. Dawson Close. Yep, Dawson uh, comes from a great family. Really hardworking kid. Um, extremely impressive tape. Came up here and uh, visited a couple weeks ago, did, you know, and, and loved it. Absolutely loved it. Committed the next day. Um, him and his dad did. Local product, once again, from Kennewa Hills High School here in the greater Grand Rapids area, Armani Baskin. Yeah, Armani's another one. Really good kid's grown a lot throughout the last couple of years. You know, we've known about him um, since I've been here. And, you know, he's been extremely impressive, but just uh, kind of grew into his body now. He Two years ago, I believe he was only about 200 pounds, and now he's, you know, grown into a, a grown man, 6'3", 285. So the sky's the limit for that kid. A Dearborn, Florida native, uh, went to Fordson High School. Uh, I, make, I guess Dearborn, Michigan, I'm guessing. Uh, Faez al -Ziedi. Yeah, Faez is extremely impressive. You know, he, he's a big, strong kid, um, one of the best offensive linemen in the state. Uh, when you pop on his tape, you see the physicality, you see the strength, you see uh, – the athleticism just absolutely drives people into the ground. You see he's got a little nasty in him. Um, just extremely, uh, you know, as a D-line coach, I'm extremely happy that I get to go up against that guy at practice every day and not in a game because he's he's a good one. Well, you, we're looking at uh, some of the, the huddle tapes for highlights for these players, and uh, 
Uh, Lucas, uh, that has to be a, a huge asset to the coaching profession, not just you, but to all the coaches to be able to really get a good analysis of the players' abilities. Oh, yeah, 100%. We're st uh, going to go now to uh, defensive line. Tequarius Irby, uh, came, again, a West Michigan native from Muskegon and went to Muskegon High School. Yep, uh, Irby came up. He was, he was a part of our first uh, recruiting visit we had. Um, committed on his visit. We, you know, I've watched him play in, in multiple games throughout the year. Um, his his defense line coach is a guy that we trust. He's he's actually uh, the father of one of our assistant coaches. So we, you know, we've built a great connection there, and he says nothing but great things about about Ty, and we're excited to have him. High schooler coming from the Thumb area, Bay City Western High School, Owen Basia Galupo. Yep, Owen's another one. Super impressive kid. Very very. Uh, High academic kid, uh, works his butt off uh, on and off the field. Um, excited to have him. All right, I uh, went down to Florida University High School in uh, Daytona. Uh, Joel Vargas. Yep, Joel, uh, 4.2 GPA, uh, led Central Florida in sacks, 13 and a half sacks. Uh, extremely impressive uh, film. Absolutely a terror for, for quarterbacks. You've got him uh, as a defensive end right now. Is that yep. uh, going to be where he's going to be, or is it possible he could shift a little there? No, he, he's a, he's what we call our joker defensive end, so he's a guy who, who can play linebacker or D-line. He's uh, just depending on what package we're in, but we, we just got to get him after the quarterback. Speaking of Florida, Lakeland, Florida, produces uh, Lake Gibson high product Nick Patterson. Yeah, Nick, Nick is extremely impressive, uh, very good football player. They got an extremely good defensive line out there. Very good program um, at the 8A level in Florida, which is the highest level. Uh, Nick came up on a visit a couple weeks ago, committed, high academic kid, extremely strong, powerful. Uh, excited to get him. Well, Nick brought a teammate with him uh, from Lake Gibson High School as well, defensive tackle Jeremy McQueen. Yeah, Jeremy, uh, you know, th this is an impressive kid now. He's a 400-pound bench, 680-pound uh, squat, 330-pound power clean. He was a state runner-up last year in the weight in uh, powerlifting in Florida. Uh, he was all state and in, in on the offensive line and defensive line. He, uh, you know, he had multiple Division One offers, and you know, we just built a great rapport with him, his family, and um, extremely excited to have him here. Back to the Great Lakes State from Battle Creek, the Serial City uh, product from Battle Creek Lakeview High School, Amari Spicer. Yep, Amari's a, a long, a longer DB. You know, we, we've been known for having multiple DBs that, that are, are longer. That's the way Coach Mack likes them. Amari's a a very, very good one. Could play a lot of different positions for us in the back end. Had great success in defensive backfield in this program, haven't we? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It makes my job a little easier up front. All right. Uh, Orlando, Florida. Back again, another uh, Florida product from West Orange High School in Orlando. Oops, oops. Uh, no, I'm going to skip another player here. We're going to go to Livonia, Michigan. Uh, Gary Morris uh, out of Franklin High School. Yep. Gary, uh, no, like we said earlier about uh, Amari, another longer DB. Uh, could play safety or corner. Extremely physical. Uh, can play man, uh, play man for us, and it's going to be a really good one for us. All right, uh, from uh, Deltona, Florida, University High School, wide receiver Chandler Powers. Yep, Chandler uh, is another one, super high academic kid, had multiple uh, FCS offers coming out, had 88 catches for over 1,000 yards. Um, he's a state placer in weightlifting. Um, just phenomenal, phenomenal gift for us on offense. He's going to be a, a, a big-time playmaker for us. All right, uh, let's how about talk about a running back, uh, Mason Norwood. Uh, he's from uh, Altamonte Springs, Florida, at Lake Brantley High School, a guy you're really high on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, M Mason is a kid who could do a lot of different things. He could play running back, fullback, H-back. Um, comes from a phenomenal program down, down in L at Lake Brantley High School. Um, really well-ran program. He's also going to play lacrosse here. Okay, So he's also committed to play lacrosse. He's a really good lacrosse player. Um, actually comes from the same program as uh, – the quarterback over at Ferris, who was a pretty good lacrosse player. We're seeing more and more of that, Lucas. Uh, players, uh, lacrosse players uh, who, who are playing football uh, like to play lacrosse, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a growing, it's definitely a growing sport. And, you know, it, it, as we've been able to see, it's transitioning over to the football field and those guys are able to make some plays. All right, uh, let's uh, go to the linebacker position. A young man from Martin Luther King High School has got a state championship uh, in his high school resume, Carl Williams. Yeah, Carl, Carl is another kid, extremely impressive, state champ. Um, he's originally from Texas. He moved to uh, Detroit this past year here and, and uh, won the state championship with King. And Coach Walker is extremely excited about him. Another linebacker, this one from Chicago, went to Simeon, uh, Latrell Scott. 
Yeah, Latrell's a, a big physical kid. Um, does a great job getting off blocks. He, he's gonna he's gonna run through somebody's face. Um, you know, that's exactly what you want as a, as a linebacker. He's a 4.0 student, so he's a good one. An Illinois native from Harlem High School in McChesney Park, Illinois, Adrian Palos. Yeah, a Adrian's a uh, sideline to sideline kid. Uh, we're looking at him as, as uh, a buck linebacker for us. Uh, you know, Coach Sparks was talking about uh, guys we, we had to go to battle with for um, battle with other schools against for him, and Adrian's one of those guys. A lot of schools on him and ultimately chose to come here. A couple more kickers and uh, punters that we're going to talk a little bit about. Uh, from Montague High School here on the west side of the state, Andrew Coy. Yep, we, yeah, we, we ended up signing two really good kickers. Um, both these guys can – can uh, punt and kick. So An Andrew Coy is more of a punter than a kicker, but he can also kick. Uh, very, very excited to have him here. And uh, from Pawpaw, Michigan, Jose Valverde. Yeah, Jose's got a huge leg. Um, he's built more like a linebacker than he is a kicker, but he's, uh, you know, he he's a really good one. Uh, definitely excited to get him. And go ahead. Tell you go, we met, I missed somebody? Uh, the two tight ends. Go ahead. Uh, let's go back to the tight ends. I'm sorry. That, that's my mistake. Uh, I don't have him on my sheet. Uh, help me out then. So we got uh, Zach Painter, uh, tight end from Williamston High, um, six foot two, 210 pounds. He's a guy who can play linebacker or tight end, uh, really versatile kid, uh, 4.0 GPA, really, really excited about him. And then the other one is Clint Walker, 6'3", 215, from Middlebury, Indiana. Uh, he was first team all-conference there, all area. We, we definitely love what we saw on film from this kid, his uh, sister actually plays basketball here at DU. So, um, you know, glad we were able to keep the family only rooting for one. Well, that was my mistake, Lucas. Uh, Zach Painter and Clinton Walker, uh, happy to join the program here, uh, and, and their versatility will be will be looked for in the Panther program. Finally, Lucas, let's ask you a little bit more about uh, these high school youngsters come in, the adjustment they have to make. Uh, sure, there's, there's an academic adjustment uh, from high school to college, but uh, what can you tell them, what, what do you tell them about the athletic adjustment from high school to college? Um, you know, it, it's going to be what they make it. You know, some guys are able to come in and adjust a little quicker than others. Um, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with what they were able to do at the high school level. Um, but it's just you come in here, you play your role, you work your butt off, and, you know, you, and, and you just let it play out. Assistant Coach Lucas Mello, the recruiting coordinator and uh, also running back coach here at Davenport University. We'll take one more quick timeout, come back Sparky McEwen with some final comments on this class as we continue with our signing day special Davenport University football here. Thanks. And our final segment of the uh, signing day special here at Davenport University. An exciting day. Uh, Spark Coach Spark Head Coach Sparky McEwen joins us right now again. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, Recruiting Coordinator Lucas Mello for being with us uh, to talk about some of the uh, high school signees here in the mid-year rollies. Coach McEwen, uh, now, you, you, again, this is an exciting time. Uh, your, your staff has worked really, really hard uh, from the final whistle. Uh, you guys got at it. I mean, literally, you were on a plane, weren't you, as soon as that final game ended? Planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah. That's great, but uh, it, it paid off. Uh, just kind of, if you can, generalize this group right here, uh, why you're so excited about it. You know, when you, when you take a look at this group, uh, I think we have 55 kids in our class. Um, the number one thing that jumps off the papers, the grades. You know, the academics are strong, and, you know, uh, when you take a look at them talented-wise, these are kids that can compete at this level. Um, I think this is a group that – at the high school, kids coming in, they're going to be developed. They're going to be able to get here and play soon. Um, great character, uh, but probably the most athletic group that I've had since I've been here. Um, I'm, I'm really happy about this group. By far, this has been the best group for us, and I know a lot of teams, they'll say those same things, but, you know, we judge those groups by a number of things. You know, we want to go out and get winners as well. We want to get a number of kids that's won championships and, um, that's important because we want to continue to build on that winning culture. Um, and then from our staff, 
they continue to do a tremendous job. Um, you know, they understand that in 2021, you know, there was five wins and there were eight losses, and that's not what we want. That's not what we're about. Uh, we want to compete with the big boys. That's what we want to do. So um, we understood that when that season ended, the very next day, um, it's been, you know, business as usual. Get on the road and go find good football players that um, that's going to love a great city, that's going to get a world-class education, and that's going to come and compete in the best conference in the country. So we felt pretty good about it, excited about uh, my guys getting a coach. Uh, Mr. Lawton going to give us a couple of days off now and uh, let us catch our breath so we could do it all over again. All right, uh, a couple of quick comments uh, on uh, on the spring ball. Uh, will there be a spring game, and, and what's in tap for spring? Oh, yeah, it's going to be a spring game, you know. But before that, we got the winter season. These guys are training. Um, they're working extremely hard uh, in the weight room, in the classroom. Um, and then, obviously, the spring is going to happen for us. We're going to kick our spring off. It looks like March 16th, and then it's going to – uh, finish up with a with a spring game on April 16th, I think it is, and we'll hit the schedule. We'll put that on our website, uh, but for the most part, that sounds like the correct dates, and we'll get 15 opportunities. Uh, we'll get to go into the cozy confines of the indoor uh, that we have here and um, get that work in and uh, get ready for a big season this year in, in, in 2022. You can check that and all things at Davenport Athletics at DUPanthers.com. One final thing about the fall schedule. Uh, uh, you're excited about uh, a home game shift that we haven't seen much of late. Yeah, it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle there, and we knew that uh, was going to be tough in 2021, uh, obviously in our, in our fight through the pandemic, and, and hats off to our young men for – um, following protocols and being disciplined as they've been, and, and uh, knock on wood, uh, we've we've uh, had some success in that area where, you know, COVID obviously is a winner when it comes to all the things that's been going on across our country. So um, we're 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 fired up about our schedule. It looks like we're going to have uh, a number of home games at home, in which our uh, home fans deserve it. And um, you know, uh, it, you know, we'll unveil the final two games that uh, we're trying to ink right now. Uh, but it's an exciting, you know, schedule. And obviously, uh, with the competition that comes with it, our fans are going to be treated to some outstanding, outstanding football. All right. So, again, uh, when that uh, schedule is official, you'll see it at dupanthers.com. That will wrap up our signing day special. Uh, thanks to the good folks at Arite Visual for their usual outstanding work here with our production uh, sports information. Ryan Thompson, Cooper Widen-Taylor are getting our information, and uh, Emily and Coach Mello and everybody else uh, who helped make this possible. So for Coach Sparky McEwen, I'm Rick Berkey saying thanks for joining us once again, and go Panthers.